Hey YouTube, this is Warren Marshall, and today we're going to talk about how to build and texture really like big props, like bridges and stuff like that. You know, because honestly, the first bridge that I ever built for a game, I was, I really hadn't done that kind of thing before. You know, there's always a first time for every kind of prop. And, uh, you know, I had to figure out ways of making it work and how could I get it to look decent on a single texture sheet and all that kind of stuff. So we're going to look at what I learned, what techniques I still stick with, and, uh, while not super in-depth, hopefully this will give you enough to chew on that you'll be able to attack this kind of thing yourself in the future. So real quick, let's just look at the finished product. Um, I don't have these at Engine right now, but we're just going to look at some screenshots from my art station. So this is, these are the sorts of bridges I'm talking about. Big, sprawling spanner bridges that are huge in the game. And people ask me pretty, cons well, pretty regularly, I should say, how do you put these together? How do you approach them? And looking at these, you know, if you really stop and look at these, you can probably see you know, a lot of what the answer is. You see a lot of repeating elements. You see stuff that's Stuff that's repurposed, reused, twisted, turned, that kind of thing. We're going to dive in a little deeper here in a second. But now in terms of uh, where you start, the thing, uh, the advantage I had with these, with this particular bridge was there was already an existing bridge. And they said, well, it needs to fit these dimensions of the old bridge because we want it to be a drop-in replacement. So I knew the size. I knew the basic complexity level that they wanted so i could just kind of extrapolate from there and go um, you know, other options are you may have concept art for the bridge that that kind of thing or you may just be told to make something up which is fine too it all comes down to the same construction technique regardless of where it begins and uh so let's jump into uh let's jump into painter and look at it there okay so uh, here we are in painter and if you're familiar, you know, like I said, with the micro to macro video, this probably looks pretty familiar. Uh, to build the, uh, the pieces for the bridge, I basically went ahead and I made a bunch of different kinds of beams, a connector piece up here. There's a big cable over here that I can reuse in various spots, some small plates and some connector, some connector pieces and doodads. I mean, it's really what it is at, at this stage, but it's just a matter of picking out some interesting stuff, adding different patterns of bolts, uh, you know, and giving it some generic texturing that doesn't really have any uh, huge landmarks on it that you'll notice repeating and that sort of thing. So this is, th this is how I lay it out in terms of the texturing. See if I can get a good look at the, uh, the texture map, yeah. So if I split this up, click on something that's not annoying, and then, okay. Yeah, you can see this is all just laid out on the UV map, nice and flat, so I can map any piece of geometry to any piece of this. This essentially becomes a big, it's not really a trim texture, and it's not really an atlas. It's sort of a, a, a hybrid between the two. But it gets the job done. And if you're wondering why these girders and things uh, don't have actual holes in the geometry. They do, uh, well, you'll see here when I jump in the moto and look at the actual meshes, but this was done for optimization purposes because we, you know, we couldn't have this piece being used everywhere with holes cut out of it you know, all over the place. It would just chew up chew up polygons already. And these things are, are so huge that that's a real concern. You do have to watch it. You know, I know these days we're getting less and less worrisome about the number of, uh, of polygons on props and things, but with something the size of these bridges, you do have to take a little bit of care. So having said all that, uh, we're going to jump into Moto. We're probably doing things in a weird order here, but you know, I just wanted to show you the pieces laid out and finalized, and now we'll talk about the thought process behind constructing them over in, in Moto. So as you can see inside the Moto, this is pretty much exactly what you'd expect. I've got my low or my high poly mesh set up here. There is some stuff on here that I didn't actually end up using. Uh, you know, this weird little spiral frame thing. And, um, and, and there could be a few other little doodads that didn't get transferred. 
but you can see the high poly meshes in here. It's got the uh, bolts all stuck on. Uh, I just found it easier to control that here in Moto this time around, or on this particular piece. Sometimes I stamp those on in Painter, but this seemed like it was probably more productive to do it in here so I could have more control. But yeah, it's just a high poly, well, it's a, it's a high poly mesh. It's not even all that complicated. And then the low poly gets laid out and we determine our UV map like so, like you saw in the other, uh, you know, like you saw in Painter. Now in terms of texel density, I just kind of went with whatever I felt looked good. Uh, there were no guidelines on this. And I exported from Painter out of 4K resolution when I exported it, if I remember correctly, because it's such a massive piece. And even then it was a little blurry in the game. <laughs> so you gotta, you can either use multiple texture IDs and to give yourself more resolution or maybe overlay like a detail normal map which they may have done um but but probably not that's usually the first thing that gets punted when optimizations come around but yeah it's all a dance it's all about how can you build it efficiently how can you texture it so it looks decently like you have to optimize like the key with it really is with something this massive is you have to optimize for the general view that the player will have of whatever it is. These bridges, the players, well, uh, I'll say that the size of my, uh, you know, my cursor here, for example, right? Like if you're standing here or here, yeah, you're pretty close to this, but generally you've got sort of like a, like a long, long shot view of the bridge. And as long as it cohesively hangs together, you know, in terms of, of the vision of the texel density, it sells well enough to you know to work. And in games with massive, uh, massively far view distances and things, you just can't use fourteen textures on a bridge. It's just not going to fly. So, having said all of that, and just thrown random fact factoids at you, uh, I'm going to pull up the uh, uh, the moto file that has the constructed bridges, and we'll talk about the road and things like that. Hang on. Okay, so here we go. I've got the uh, yeah, the assembled pieces pulled up in Modo. Now, since we've seen these a few times, you probably recognize the pieces you're looking at. There's the connector doodad. Uh, the word of the day is apparently doodad. Sorry, I said it about eight times in this video. I'm I'm really trying to stop. But you can see, you know, the connector piece is in there. That piece. There's the uh, there's the cross beams I was telling you about. Here's all those little bits that had all the bolts on them and they're all just kind of assembled and stuck together in ways that look interesting, but you know, they fill up the space, but they're not horrendously dense. It's just, well, it, it's all very much a, uh, you know, a balancing act, trying to find something that looks good in the game, but is not too expensive. Now, speaking of expensive, you probably noticed that I do have these cut out down here. And this was a conscious decision because when you're looking at the bridge from say this sort of an angle, you will see through those holes and it's kind of cool looking down here. And it's not directly in the area where most of the action takes place. Like this, uh, this is kind of a design thing, really nothing to do with this bridge technique, but the center area of the bridge is where the bulk of the action takes place. And you notice that's fairly clear of stuff. Most of the details up top and on the sides and a little bit on the bottom. The central area is pretty plain and that's intentional. So you can see people. But anyway, so the only thing left to talk about really is the road and the sidewalk inside here. Cause you'll see they don't have a texture. That's because we don't handle that here. All we do here is we make allowances for it. So let me show you. If I pull up the UVs and isolate these polygons. So the road is mapped just, uh, I think it's about four times, uh, four times vertically. And that just means that when the client gets the bridge, they can say they could put whatever type of texture they want on that bridge. 
asphalt or, you know, whatever. I'm not going to get into all the different types of road materials. You know what I'm talking about. Um, and the sidewalk's the same way. The sidewalk is actually tiled more than the uh, bridge was. But as long as from, and this is not exactly aligned, but it doesn't matter because from here to here is one, one UV block of space vertically. And then it's whatever it is lengthwise, 10 or nine or whatever. But the important thing is that this again, lets the client swap out that texture for whatever they want it to be. And you don't have to eat the cost of that on the bridge texture, which is already packed tight full of stuff. And really that's uh, the bulk of it. You just go through and you create more and more pieces. So this is a little, uh, that's a test piece or a special case piece, I should say. But you can see again, same thing on this piece, same pieces being reassembled. It's kind of like uh, like Taco Bell prop, de uh, prop development. You've got a certain number of things and you just mix and match in different orders and create new things. See, what's this one here? We got like a uh, the same kind of thing, but with a shorter with a shorter entrance. There's a little ramp piece that lets you merge in with the terrain. And what is this? Oh, this is the thing that uh, sits underneath the bridge. So you can see all the metal area on this uh, on this bumper piece, not bumper piece, uh, uh, support support base or whatever. All the metal pieces are using that same bridge texture, just mix and matched and um, and put together in interesting ways. And this base part, let me flip back over to the actual screenshots, is a, uh, uh, that's a separate texture that wasn't gonna get used anywhere else. So, it, so it's got a custom little you know, concrete base built for it. But that's it. Really, there's uh, one texture here, there's one for the bridge. So I'm delivering two, two texture sets to the client for this whole bridge construction, and they supply the uh, sidewalk and road. And this is, what, uh, uh, this is how it comes together. You've got all those pieces we just looked at, and they're all strung together, and they all snap together like Lego, like a modular set should, and it looks like one big bridge. And that's the general construction technique. So before we fade to black here, um, I want to, to address one more point. Uh, I know in these tutorials, things can look kind of slick and it's like, not mine, but other people's videos, you know, it looks kind of slick, like they've made all the right decisions from the beginning. And I knew every piece I was gonna need for this bridge. So I put it all together and it was just like, snap it together, boom, and I'm done. You know, the reality is pretty far from that. The reality is that I started off with a few pieces that I knew I was gonna need started building bridge pieces, discovered that I needed more variation or I needed to have a different kind of girder or I needed to, or I, you know, I wasn't gonna use this piece anymore, but I really could use this piece. Let's scoot him out of there and put him on the Atlas and that kind of thing and back and forth, back and forth. So you know, don't feel bad if you get into this and you find yourself, you're having to go back and revisit the mesh over and over until you have enough stuff. I mean, it really is an experience thing. If I built another bridge now, I'd be a lot more confident in knowing what I needed. But when I started, I really didn't have a good idea at all. So yeah, just wanted to pass along that, uh, well, word of encouragement, I guess. Don't be afraid to iterate because that really is how, how these things get done, the reiteration. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.